This week, the Firestone Firehawk Series stops at the southern tip of the New York Finger Lakes. We're at Watkins Glen for the 24-hour Firestone Firehawk Endurance Championship. All three classes are here. It's another huge field. And Dorsey Schrader, the 24-hour race is a unique event. Yeah, when you talk about endurance racing, 24 hours is it. This is really, really tough on both man and machine. In the next 24 hours, these cars will break. The drivers, they'll go through any number of circumstances. Now, what's the most unique thing that's happened to you during a 24-hour race? I think the most unique thing that ever happened happened right here at Watkins Glen during a 24-hour when I was going up the straightaway and the steering wheel came unbolted from the hub. I was going along and, and I looked down and all the bolts had fallen onto the floor and I had to go lap by lap picking them up and putting them back in the steering wheel as the others unscrewed. That wasn't much fun. There'll be some wild stories. We'll have them all for you, plus a lot more. Here's what's coming up this week on Firestone Fire Off. Bobby Labonte is fighting for the points championship in the Bush Grand National Series. He used the 24-hour race to learn about the Watkins Glen trap. Pacing is an important part of the 24-hour event. We'll look at how the crews and the cars survive this weekend drive. And you'll see the heavy price some drivers pay when making a mistake in the tight turns at Watkins Glen. All this coming up on Firehawk. Today's show is brought to you by Firestone, the official sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. And by Oldsmobile. Come see the power of intelligent engineering. Right now, the Firehawk car is practicing on the long track here at Watkins Glen. Dorsey, it's quite a trip around here. Very long racetrack, very fast racetrack. It's hard on a car to run 24 hours here. Hard on the brakes, hard on the drivers. A lot can happen. And, of course, another factor involved in the 24-hour race is the constantly changing weather, which has played a role in past events. We sit here in a beautiful, sunny day, and this is unprecedented, only because I'm not driving this weekend. I have driven <laughs> here in everything but snow. I've been here in the downpour of rain. They've had to cancel the race or slow it up or stop it one time because of fog you couldn't see in front of you. There was cars going in the woods. There was cars going every which way. We were afraid people were cheating by taking the NASCAR short course, but you would have never known because you couldn't see anything. You couldn't even see the pace car in the fog, right? We passed the pace car in the fog, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Well, there will be a lot of unique things happening. Now let's join Dan Kenyon with some of the men that will be competing. Well, Bill, I'm down here on the starting grid with Joe Vardy. And, Joe, you guys set a track record here. You guys are in the front, but it's a long, long race. What's your strategy going to be? Well, we're just going to try to keep on the lead lap and run our own race and... Um, See what happens. It's going to be, like you said, a long race, and uh, we'll worry about it tomorrow when the sun comes up. Being on the pole in touring division is all psychological. It gives the crew a big, you know, a big psychological boost, and it does the same for us. It really doesn't mean a whole lot position-wise, especially in a 24-hour race, but I still like it. Once again, Porsche dominated qualifying, taking the top eight positions. So 64 cars rolled out for the start, the beginning of a true endurance test. Banning wall-to-wall -wall on the front stretch, the field took the green flag. The first lap of a nearly 1,900-mile trip. The cars carefully carved a path across the glen, looking for the delicate balance between running for the lead and running at the finish. Tight in the turns and hard up the hills, the bend of a please-don't-break philosophy was in force. For 24 hours, the patience and performance of the crew is tested in the pits. Some are nervous, and some are not. Desire fuels the dream of every driver and every team. But don't forget the tape. It can be as critical as the tires. Who's leading the race is not nearly as important as who's surviving. But for the record, Porsches were the class of the class in Grand Sports. The front runners in the sports division included two Toyotas, two Turtles, and a couple of Castrol cars. In touring, this Saturn and this one were leading this Honda and this one. This 24-hour race is one of just a handful in the world. You think about finishing, not about winning. And you think about it, lap after lap after lap. 
You watch and wait and hope. Counting the hours, counting the cars, counting the laps. The 24 Eagle ran just 23 laps, the first to finish, about 1,800 miles shy of its destination. The yellow fly can be a friend, a break, a rest, unless it's for you. This BMW got a DNF, but it was enjoyable while it lasted. Well, it's fun. A lot of, you know, a lot of good, pl good places for driving. You know, the, the track is fantastic. You know, drive very professional, everything else. I enjoy it for two hours in the car, you know, but I uh, hope, uh, you know, unfortunately those things can happen, you know. The 55 Porsche got the hook on lap 63. The 64 Honda retired on lap 92. And the 40 Oldsmobile Calais brought out the caution and the cleanup crew on lap 115. Even the top contenders were not immune to the gremlins of the Glen. The Toyota team lost two cars in the first four hours. Both rides were retired before drivers Chris Port and P.J. Jones got to the track. They weren't scheduled to drive until the evening hours. That is some bad luck early on for the Toyota. We hear uh, electrical fire in the first car, and this looks like a head gasket. Are you going to get them back in their show? Well, the boys are back in the in the garage area trying to put the uh, 68 car back together back there, but it's a lot of burned pieces. Um, the 67 car has got a head gasket. I'm not too sure whether we can do anything with that either, but we're going to take her behind a wall and see, what we, see if, if we can fix it. A long way to go, and I've seen this one from pretty far behind before, so you're not out of it. Well, we got parts. We'll throw parts at her. Five hours in, Mark Sandrich led in the 50, followed closely by the 74. The 77 Kelly Moss car was running in the third position, followed by the 92 of Bruce Jenner and company. The 51 was fifth, the 06 was sixth, and the 95 BMW was seventh. In sports, the hackers were running first and second, followed by a red Taurus disguised as a teenage turtle. In touring, the copper kettle Honda held the lead, with the Saturns running second and third, looking for a third straight win. As the hours ticked by, the contenders came into sharp focus. Problems trimmed the Porsche contingent. The 92 car quit on lap 149 after about 500 miles. That's 1,400 miles short. And while some teams boasted they had no fear... Rick, you going to put the uh, fluid in there? Yeah, I already well, did. did. The track was ready to start taking its toll on cars and crew. <laughs> Lee Miller was running second when he rolled the Marriott Fairfield in Porsche on lap 150. He was okay. And after a lengthy caution to clean the track, the 29 Ford Probe crashed in the same turn. The driver was okay. And while this car was battered, the crew made repairs and the team ran another 168 laps before the car retired early Sunday morning with a mechanical failure, finishing 42nd after starting 57th. For many Firehawk teams, the day was already over. But for others, the race had just begun. As we head into the evening hours of this 24-hour endurance championship, several competitors already eliminated through mechanical problems and Dorsey some through some rather spectacular on-track incidents. And surprisingly, the, the people we're talking about are the top contenders. We're losing cars of the number one teams, if you will. That's not characteristic of usually what goes on in the first half of a 24-hour race. How about the darkness hours? Tougher for a driver? Well, some adapting has to be done for the, the darkness, but not really. I actually like the, the dark better. It's, uh, it's comfortable, it's cooler. You you can run the car harder or safer. And the action continues in this 24-hour endurance race. Is his radio still good and strong? Throughout the race, you question the equipment and continue counting the laps. 10 hours, 222 laps, 748 miles. Not yet halfway. One driver was in a unique race. Bush Grand National competitor Bobby Labonte was making his first Firehawk appearance. The same weekend he was racing in the BGN event in Rougemont. 
So Friday, Bobby left the track to fly to North Carolina. But first, he got some valuable Firehawk seat time. Well, I guess I had learned a lot in a short period of time because I've never been to this racetrack before, around the racetrack. And uh, driving that car was a lot different because it's uh, the weight and the brakes are a lot different than what I'm used to. So uh, I had learned the track and the car at the same time. But, uh, you know, it was uh, coming around there at the end of the practice, I guess. It was uh, get a lot more fun. I just uh, drive in a little deeper every time. It's, I'm used to driving my own cars, and now I'm driving somebody else's. So... Uh, I take care of that stuff more <laughs> more now than I did, I guess, because I knew I could fix mine, but I, I don't want to fix somebody else's. But Bobby's Firehawk crew did have to make major repairs after co-driver Kim Campbell crashed in practice. And while Bobby went to Rougemont to continue his battle for the Grand National Points Championship, he was hoping his Firehawk investment would pay big dividends for his BGN team. Well, yeah, you know, that's... Uh, it's, I know it's in a different car and a different, you know, we'll be running at night, and if it rains, we'll run in the rain, but uh, it'll at least give us some uh, track time to, to know, you know, where the braking points are and the, off the gas and heel and toe, and, you know, at least I'll have some laps around the racetrack. I mean, that's going to help out, I believe, when we come back. Labonte's first competitive Firehawk laps came Saturday night after racing in Rougemont, then racing back to the Glen. Well, Bobby, how was it out there? Uh, pretty dark. That's about all I can say. It's dark. Yeah. Never that's done that before, so it's pretty neat, I guess. Pretty different. It's been a long day for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, but uh, I don't know. We're having fun. Yeah, learning experience for you, even in the dark? Well, yeah, I would say so. I've seen a lot of stuff out there I probably won't see in the daylight, so it's all right. For race teams, the evening hours brought time to eat and for some time to sleep. And for the race fans, campfires to provide some heat. Things in the pits were heating up, too. 274 laps, 923 miles. Just past midnight now, the halfway mark. And the work continues for the race crews. And for race director Marty Kaufman and his staff of race officials as well. They've been working out there a long time. We normally do a shift change, et cetera, with all the workers on the course and our staff people, but it, it gets to be tough. It's a long event. Excuse me just a second. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. The bright lights and long night burn away faint memories of the glamour of racing. 4 a.m., the Kelly Moss Porsche leads. Only three cars remain on the lead lap. The Zero Castrol Oldsmobile leads the sports division by two laps as the drivers continue to battle the hours and the elements. You can't see the apexes very well. And another real problem is everybody, no, I say everybody, must be a lot of people are going off both the first turn and the, uh, well, between the second to last turn and the last turn, and they kick up a lot of dust. And two laps before I pull in, I, I went right down the low gear after the first turn because I had no idea which way the track went from where I was sitting. Now, I didn't want to drive off in the grass before I could see again, but I slowed right down. I had to wait for the dust to blow away before I could proceed. That's, that's part of night racing. In touring, the number 21 Bahamas Princess Casino Honda leads the division by more than a lap. Sunrise in the mountains of upstate New York. It's 5.33 a.m. It was worth staying up for. Just six and a half hours to go in the Firehawk 24 hours at Watkins Glen. Next week on Firehawk, P.J. Jones has a famous father and a bright future. He's making the Firehawk series one stop on his busy racing schedule. you got to look at your elders, and I think you got to try to learn from them, and, and you also learn from the series. It's safety first in any form of racing. Dorsey takes a look at the safety modifications allowed on these street-legal Firehawk cars. And all three divisions of the Firestone Firehawk series head west to Monterey, California. It's a three-hour race, and we'll have all the highlights next week. As the rising sun transformed darkness to daylight, it was time to survey the bodies bruised in the nighttime battles. Even teenage superheroes took a beating, no matter how hard their shell. The wounded waited for the end of the race, then for a lift home for repairs. 
The 12 caution periods totaled 5 hours and 49 minutes. In the pits, the work continued. Desperate teams trying to complete the demanding 24 hours. At 7 a.m., the Kelly Moss Motorsports Porsche led the Grand Sports Division by two laps. The 84 Porsche that crashed in practice and roared out of the garage on the green flag lap was running second. And the 50 Porsche was running third, three laps down. The Zero Castro Oldsmobile had a firm grip on the group in sports, leading that division by two laps. And in touring, the Princess Casino Honda was still in front, with two Hondas chasing it throughout the morning, the 56 on the lead lap and the 87 one lap down. As the morning rolled on, the real race developed in that touring division. The 56 closed on the 21 and took the lead when the 21 car pitted. Then, when the Honda returned to the track, it ran into some stubborn traffic and radioed for help. Yeah, he is. He's a good bit down. If he's, if he's tangling with you, uh, back off on a little bit and we'll get someone down there to talk to him. The 56 Honda had the lead, and this team had a winning game plan already in place. We'll make one more stop, um, and then run the rest of the distance. Hopefully we can do it under yellow. Who knows? So the 21 car went to work, carved in, caught up, and overhauled the 56 Honda. Then disaster struck for the 56 team. They had waited one lap too long to bring in the car, and as the 56 headed down pit road, it lost the left front tire. The car was parked for 11 minutes while the team fixed the front suspension. Meanwhile, the 21 car made its final stop, returned to the track, and was never challenged the rest of the race. The hackers were closing in on a career accomplishment that had eluded them, winning the 24-hour race, leading the sports division by a whopping six laps. And in Grand Sports, the Kelly Moss crew pitted for the final time shortly before 10.30. Nick Ham taking over for Paul Tosi with a comfortable three-lap cushion. I heard him giving you your lap times over the radio, and they were saying you could ease off a little bit, and I, it was kind of like they were trying to convince you to do that. Well, you're probably right, but, you know, if you ease off too much, you can you lose the rhythm and lose the timing a bit. So I tried to back off a little bit just by moving braking points back and uh, shift points down a little bit, and that saves the car and works pretty well. And the Kelly Moss Porsche worked well the rest of the way, holding off the Sandwich Salads 51 Porsche and the Phoenix Commodity 74, and cruising to the checkered flag. The margin of victory, three laps, two minutes and 22 seconds. The Hacker Zero Castro Oldsmobile sailed to victory in the sports division, leading by more than four laps. And in touring, the Bahamas Princess Casino number 21 Honda was the victor, leading that division by a lap. Nick, first of all, congratulations. You guys have had a successful season. It's always great to win the 24-hour. Great. Just great. I can't believe it happened. Good team effort. Three things I wanted for us. Great Kelly Moss teamwork, preparation. Every pit stop went perfect. Terrific car. Porsche 944 S2. It's just as good now as when we first started the race. And then great driving, all, the all my teammates, Paul Tosi, Bobby Aiken, Tom Rathburn, John Osteen. Great job. Everyone did their job perfectly. Is it something special to win the 24-hour event? You bet. <laughs> it's been up a long time. You know, we got a core here of 20 guys, you know, and uh, 10 of them are with us everywhere. The rest of them we kind of pick up, and they always do the 24-hour with us, you know. And for us, I mean, this is the seventh, I think, Watkins Glen 24-hour. Uh, we've never, we've done some seconds here, you know, but this year with the uh, W41 Quad 442 with Castro GTX sponsorship, I mean, the whole package came together. Uh, we looked good. We ran good. You drove it into victory lane, but it's, an, and to any race, it's a team effort, especially in the 24-hour oh, race. Oh, absolutely, and a car that was rolled just three days ago, and the crew put it back together, the TC Klein racing team, Peter and Greg and Randy, all everyone is a winner here, really. Everyone. It's been a great race. 
Every race is great to win, Randy, but a 24-hour race is always something special, isn't it? It's something special to T.C. Klein Racing because this is three years in a row for the Firestone Firehawk 24-hour in, in Hondas. And they, they always make it. And starting last, after the big crash in practice, it, it looked so bad, like we weren't going to even make the race. And then to win it is just so sweet. And it's Greg's first win. Yeah, you had some luck here last year, Greg, and then it kind of went away at the end. So uh, this is where you wanted to end the race, right in victory Definitely. lane. Definitely. And, you know, to be with the T.C. Klein team and especially be racing with the, the quality drivers that I've got as my teammates, Randy, Peter, and, of course, Andy, who's my uh, lifelong friend. And so this victory is especially sweet because the two of us are in the car. So it's just great. I'm over the moon. that wraps up the action from the Firestone Firehawk 24-hour endurance championship. But the next stop on the circuit is another pretty sight, Laguna Seca. Yeah, the racing gods must be looking down pretty good on Firestone Firehawk. We've been from mid-Ohio here to Watkins Glen, now Laguna Seca, Monterey, California. You told me this was a tough job. It's going to get tougher, believe me. How about the competition on the track out there? It's going to be a real good competition there. A nice racetrack we paved last year, fast racetrack, a lot of elevation change. So next time, the Firehawk cars in action at Laguna Seca. We'll have all the action for you. And don't forget to make Inside Winston Cup Racing a part of your sports Sunday each week here on TNN. And we'll see you next week on Firestone Firehawk. Today's show has been brought to you by Oldsmobile. Come see the power of intelligent engineering. And by Firestone, the official sponsor.